how do I stand out? I'm only going to do original black characters. I'm only going to try to create original stories based off of black and African mythologies. And that was my value proposition to the art world, to the anime world. Opposed to trying to recreate what was already done, my lane was how do I make something unique in this genre? Like green tea ice cream, if you will, right? Like taking something from your culture, adding it with another culture, and then allowing it to flourish. My name is Mike Tony. I am a creative director and anime artist based out of New York. How would I define my art style? To say that here, personally, I don't actually like my art style. I'm still trying to find it. I'm constantly kind of working through my own visual shape language to find a style I really like, the faces and kind of the anatomy. Now, when it comes to the phenotypes of my characters, I clearly draw black characters or African characters from all throughout the diaspora. But one of the things I like to do is switch up my certain characteristics right within the face of phenotypes so the sizes of the noses the sizes of the lips the almond shaped eyes you'll find a lot of me trying to translate black phenotypes into the anime style of the bigger eyes the smaller noses the particular um face shapes and i don't want to lose that in my artwork and so that's what i find is the difficult part about developing a black anime style because the style itself was not really centered around, you know, anybody else that was not Asian, right? How do you make characters who have wider, broader features for characters that are meant to be kind of slimmer and slim down? There's a lot of things you want to consider when designing your character, but I think on the onset, you have to think about that character's purpose, right? And where they sit within your story and how it pushes your story along. A lot of that stuff helps me cultivate um, the character design. Um, very iconic character designs, like for example, Hisoka from Hunter x Hunter, um, him being this kind of devious clown, uh, is also embedded in the fact of his playful nature and the fact that he is there for mostly the fun of combat and the challenge of it. And when you think about a uh, circus clown, as we know him from the manga, um, that the challenge of doing all of these different feats is embedded into his design. And that to me is what makes a strong anime character in general, whether it's a villain or a hero. I think one of the scariest things for artists or anybody who's a creator is looking at a blank slate. So the first thing I do every single time when I open up a new file is I just start drawing shapes. I start drawing a bunch of circles. I start drawing a bunch of trapezoids and stuff like that. It's really just getting my hand accustomed to kind of drawing and just feeling loose. If nothing just comes out of the autonomous drawing, I immediately lay down a grid, something that had, that's a little bit cinematic, and I start putting down grid lines. And then at that point, I jump back into the autonomous drawing again, start creating sceneries on there, like what comes out of it, characters in the foreground, characters in the background. What does that kind of look like? Once that shape starts taking form, then I can start adding the finite stuff. As I'm filtering through and I'm building up on that background, maybe a cool idea happens where it's like, oh, well, maybe it's nighttime and the light's just shining in through the window. And now all we're doing is we're getting a glare of that character's eyes or their weapon. And I'm like, okay, now that's really starting to inform everything. And then I always add something in the foreground. And it's an easy way to kind of like pull the person in and guide them to your subject matter. I start thinking once that background's coming in and I'm putting that foreground character in, I'm like, okay, really what's going on here? Really what's the story that's being told here? And how do I make it look like it's a frame from a real anime? I put down art for like over 10 years at some point, like more seriously. I started college to go for business. And so when I decided to get back into art, right, more seriously, everybody was so much further along than I was. So I had to consider like jumping into art in a whole different way that other people weren't. I couldn't draw when I felt like drawing because I needed to practice at all times. I had to use what I like to call the time between time. 
I started drawing on the train every day because I had roughly an hour and change commute. And as I'm drawing every day, as I'm developing kind of my audience and my skills are growing, Instagram releases uh, Instagram Live. And that kind of started me not just drawing on the train, but also drawing and showing my process on the train as well. They were seeing me produce artwork and they're like, how the hell is this guy producing as much artwork as, he's, as he is with, while also working full time? And they were seeing that process. Like they could literally hear the train moving in the background and they could see me kind of working and then being like, all right, guys, I got to get up. I'm at Penn Station. And then kind of going along. And I, I thought that that was kind of a really special moment um, that I was able to kind of build into my process of kind of creating. But in the beginning, that was two hours a day. So a good two hours a day out of, let's say, my four to six hours of drawing. So a third of that time was in transit. Art is a muscle and it's a muscle that you can develop. It's a muscle that you can strengthen. And if anybody's proved that, I've proved that. I picked up art again in my mid twenties. And by the time before I was 30, I was asked to do the artwork for um, Black Panther. That ended up being on Vice's ID magazine. And so in four years of drawing, that's the level that I was at. And so it's so possible. And when I hear people say like, ah, oh, I put it down, I don't know if I can pick it up again. You just gotta love it enough. Um, and that could just be enough. Thanks for watching. If you liked this video, be sure to like and subscribe. And if you'd like to be notified when we upload a new video, be sure to hit that bell icon above. If you'd like to see more of Mike Tony's work, see the links in the description below. And last but not least, special thanks to Lawrence Sinsheimer. Until then, see you in the next video.